Hello, today we're joined by Becky Holtberg, who is the Executive Director for the Oregon um, Hospital Association. So Becky, thank you for joining us in, in my kitchen and to talk about what's cooking. So you came to Oregon from Alaska and started your job basically at the beginning of January and then a pandemic hit. What has that been like and how have you dealt with not just learning a new job, but dealing with this whole new reality? Yeah, that is a great question because one of the things that we don't expect when we start a new job is that our world's gonna be completely upended in a couple of short months. And that's basically what happened um, after I started this job in January. And I'm really grateful for a couple of things. Um, first of all, I had been doing a similar job, but in a different state. So the job duties itself were pretty known to me. And then I had two months with my team in the office. And having that two months before this hit was incredibly valuable because I got to know people. Uh, I got to understand how they work. I got to know my board. So that, that really helped me when it did hit to be able to navigate it successfully. But this has been a, a strange, strange time for all of us. And especially if, if you're in healthcare and especially if you've just started a new job. No, that's right. So what, what was your strategy for dealing with COVID? Mm -hmm. um, and what is your strategy going forward? Because I know hospitals have been hit, you know, very, very strongly and you know, you've know you got you've got a highly contagious virus, um, you've got people that need other kinds of healthcare. You know, what, what has been your strategy and how do you plan to move forward in this new normal? Sure, and as you can imagine, the first uh, month or so of this was just all hands on deck, literally 12 hours a day. Um, I think at one point I realized I had worked like 25 days in a row. And, and so it was really the response phase of the epidemic, how do we, how do we ensure that our hospitals are as prepared as they can be to handle the surge of patients? You know, we've kind of moved past that now, and now we're thinking about other things. How do we help these facilities that have lost up to 70% of their revenue keep their doors open? Because right now their communities really need them. So those are the kinds of questions we're facing right now and the kinds of things we're having, you know, we're working on for our members. And then at some point, and hopefully that some point is sooner rather than later, we'll, we'll, be get, we'll get to pivot and start to think about what we can learn from this and what we can do to help it shape our system moving forward. So um, I think some people are confused because they're saying, well, if we have a virus, why are hospitals losing money? And can you talk about that a, a little bit? It is so interesting. And it's especially interesting because during the Great Recession, healthcare was the one recession proof industry. Right. Healthcare kept going as everything else was as jobs were lost and everything else. That is not the case with this, this economic slowdown. Hospitals are losing revenue for a couple of reasons. The first is that we well, we, we agreed with the governors and supported the governor's decision to essentially cancel elective surgeries. And that was to preserve personal protective equipment because we needed all the available supplies to protect our workforce. And the second is that generally volumes have dropped. People are nervous about going to the doctor. They're nervous about going to the emergency department because they know that's where sick people go. And because they're adhering to the governor's social distancing requirements, I'm gonna stay home unless I'm having a bona fide emergency. But now it's important that people come back to healthcare providers, that they get done what they need to get done. Because what we don't wanna see is really significant health consequences a few months down the road because people didn't get things taken care of when they needed to. So our hospitals now are safe, they're ready to see patients, it's time for, for people to come back and get those things taken care of that they had to put off. So, um, and as you talk about how we move forward, I know you and I um, have worked together, the Hospital Association, the Bureau of Labor and Industries, on having a uh, training program for environmental service technicians, the people who clean the hospitals, mm -hmm. because normally you train them in the hospital. Well, that clearly can't be done. Um, I know that the Mayo Clinic is actually working with Hilton Hotels, and I'm hopeful that we're going to be able to work together. But what I loved about the program that we worked on was not only were we able to set up an online, low-cost online training program to train people to clean hospitals, 
good, you know, and, and, and jobs that are available. But also, we worked with you to set up a career ladder that could end up in a management job that makes near $100,000 a year. So mm -hmm. do you want to talk a little bit about that, about the career ladders and careers available in healthcare? Sure. And I just appreciate your efforts at the beginning of this of thinking, you know, this is all hands on deck. How can my agency step in? And I think the more that we can think like that, the faster our recovery will be and the better able we'll be to manage this virus over time. So I, I don't want to, to, to end this without, or to go farther without saying thank you for your, your efforts on this. But yeah, I think this is going to, this is going to change our workforce, just like it's changing other things in our lives. And one of the questions that we can ask ourselves is what are the, how is this going to change our workforce? What are the skills um, and the competencies that people are going to need uh, to, to do their jobs moving forward. And, and obviously one of those that's going to be of heightened interest is hygiene, cleanliness. How do we take care, how do we clean the spaces we work in? And obviously in a hospital that's apparent why you need to clean the space you work in. We need to clean the spaces we work in in our office buildings, in our hotels. So it's going to be incredibly important that we have people who understand the science um, behind how uh, behind hygiene and how um, how to how to clean spaces effectively so that we're we're doing the best job we can in keeping our workplaces safe. So it's you know it's my hope and I know what you're working on that you know that we can create those career ladders for people um, because we all know that just that while this pandemic has, is affecting our healthcare workforce, we still the fundamentals of healthcare have not changed. We still have an aging population. Um, we still are going to need the workforce of the future, and we need to create those career ladders for people to be able to take those jobs. Right. Well, and one of the things that we're doing at home is we're eating and making a lot of food, and you have a really great recipe to share. Yeah, I'm really excited about sharing this one because um, I was born and raised in Alaska, I've spent my virtually my entire adult life there until now. I'm so happy to be in Oregon. But I'm also happy that you share some of the cultural um, traditions that, that we have in Alaska too as part of the Pacific Northwest. So salmon is my soul food. And I, I've actually um, made this recipe once already during this pandemic and I'll make it again today. Um, but my, the recipe I wanna share is just a smoked salmon spread. It's very simple, doesn't have a lot of ingredients, very flavorful for all of, for those of you watching carbs, it's a perfect thing to make during the pandemic. Um, so it's uh, again, very simple, salmon, cream cheese, lime juice, capers, and minced onion. Um, but it's a, it's a great little recipe. Okay, that's fantastic. Well, I wanna thank you. I know how busy you are. I wanna thank you for taking the time and uh, you know, coming into hospital week. And when we, when we look at all of the ways that, that hospitals um, serve, serve the needs of our community, whether it is to take care of us when we're in, have serious illnesses or as an employer or um, like the things that you're doing and offering to do, partnering with our community colleges and with, with, our, with business and industry in figuring out how we can have a healthful population through this pandemic. So welcome to Oregon and I'm looking forward to meeting you in person soon. <laughs> Me too, so nice to see your face and I am looking forward to the day when I can meet you in person as well. Want to see more What's Cooking with Val? Make sure to subscribe to our page by clicking the link.